So, without further ado, let's turn to our first page. And our first topic here is contracts. Now, before we cover contracts, I want to give you a helpful hint right at the outset. When it comes to the law, we're going to be learning a lot of rules, and then we're going to be learning exceptions to those rules. Rarely, on the exam, or as in the real world, rarely are things always this way, never that way. Just the nature of the law is there are exceptions to many of the rules that we'll be learning. So, helpful hint for multiple choice. On the top of this first page, actually page three, I want you to put down a list of five words. You ready? All, always, never, must, and only. All, always, never, must, and only. When in doubt, when in doubt, avoid any answer choice that has one of those five words. All, always, never, must, or only. Again, as you go through this class with me, you'll see that most of the time we'll learn a rule followed by an exception to that rule. So unless you're absolutely certain about that answer choice, it's probably incorrect if it carries one of those five words in it. Now, 我们知道在法律上通常会有所谓的通则，但是呢，也不免有所谓的例外 exception。因此，在考试碰到这个选择题 multiple choice 的时候，除非非常的确定，呃，要选择哪一个答案，否则一般当你有任何的呃怀疑的时候呢。基本的原则是，出现像 all, always, never, must, only 这些是比较极端的字眼的，我们就不会选择它作为一个答案。Contracts, you ready? In English, very simply, what is a contract? To the right of the word contract, I'd like you all to put down legally enforceable agreement. So a contract is not just an agreement; it's a legally enforceable agreement. Such that if the other party to the contract breaches that contract, you would have a remedy in a court of law. So it's nothing more than a legally enforceable agreement. 首先，我们开始讲这个所谓的合约或者是合同 contracts。在这边呢，我们先用一个简单的字眼来定义，也就是我们看到，请各位写下的具有法律约束力的这个协议。因此，如果有一方有毁约的情形，那么另外一方就可以要求。救济或者是赔偿。First thing we're going to go over just some basic definitions, starting with terminology A1. Sometimes a contract can be described as an express contract. Circle the word express, and then box off for me. What does the word express mean? It's either oral, we've spoken about it, or written. So box off oral or written. Any time the terms of the contract have been spoken about, either verbally or in writing, that's called an express contract. Compare that to letter B, an implied in fact contract. Box that off. Implied in fact means it's based on circle the word conduct. It's based on the conduct of the parties. For example, if I go to Walmart and I take something off the shelf, carry it up to the cashier, my conduct indicates an offer to purchase. If they take my money and ring up the sale, their conduct indicates they've accepted my offer to purchase. 我们来看到形成合约的方式有哪些。首先，我们看到第一种是所谓的 express contract， 也就是民事的合约。民事的合约呢，可以透过口头或者是书面来形成。另外一种是所谓的这个默示的合约，也就是我们看到的 implied in fact contract。默示的合约呢，是透过一方的行为来形成。例如说，我们今天到这个百货的商场去，从架上拿了一个商品到这个收银台，准备要结账。那我们把东西拿到这个收银台去，就表达出我们要买这样东西的一个呃邀约。那当这个收银员呢，呃，把我们的东西做结账的时候，那表示他就有所这个接受。因此，这个合约呢，并没有口头说明，也没有书面。的这个呃形成，但是呢，还是形成了一个买卖的合约，这个就是所谓的 implied in fact contract。再强调一次，它就是透过我们的行为所表达出来的一个呃合约的形式。Nothing was said, nothing was written. It's all based on conduct. Perfectly acceptable. Letter C. Then there's something called implied, not in conduct. Excuse me, not implied in fact, based on conduct, but implied in law. 
also known as a quasi-contract. So what I'd like you all to do is underline in law, not implied in fact, but implied in law, also known as, circle the or, and then underline a quasi-contract. That's not a contract at all. Please note in the first line of letter C, it's really a remedy. Circle the word remedy. And what's the purpose of this remedy? In the second line, underline, to prevent unjust enrichment. It's a remedy to prevent unjust enrichment. We're actually going to cover that in greater detail when we get to remedies. So in the margin to the left of letter C, put down C page 23. That's where we'll cover that in greater detail. 呃, 依据法律的规定所形成的这个合约 implied in law contract 或者我们也称之为 quasi contract 准合约 事实上呢, 它是对这个, 呃, 或者是救济，那这个部分呢，所形成的这种合约的形式，其实它是一个准合约的形式。我们在二十三页会讲到，remedy救济的时候呢，会再讲的更仔细一点。Now, some more terminology. Sometimes contracts have two promises. Sometimes they have one. Couldn't be any easier than this. In two A, circle the word unilateral. What is a unilateral contract? In the first line of letter A, there's only one promise. Thus, they call it unilateral. To the right of where it says unilateral contract, put down this bullet point, except with complete performance. A unilateral contract is a contract where you accept, not with another promise, but you accept with complete performance. I promise to pay you $1,000 if you find my lost dog. The only way you can accept is through complete performance. You accept with an act. Thus, we have a unilateral contract. Compare.首先，我们看到依照这个所谓呃约定的呃这个形式呢，我们分成有两种。第一类叫做所谓的unilateral contract，也就是单物的契约，也就是只有一方呢他做出这个约定 promise。那另外一方如果要接受该呃邀约或者是要做 promise呢？ 它其实是直接以它的这个旅行某一种行为来表达出来它的这个承诺的行为，所以我们这边看到叫做 accept with complete performance。所以最常见的一个例子，例如说我们看到的这个寻找失误的这个悬赏广告，那因此呢，当我贴出这个悬赏的广告，如果找到我呃这个走私的这个爱犬的话，可以悬赏一万块钱。那这个时候是不是我就有一方的这个所谓promise？但是如果啊呃你也想要这个得到这一万块钱，你必须就直接去找到我的爱犬。所以这个就是complete performance，也就是如果你愿意接受这一万块钱，是因为找到这只爱犬的一个报偿，那你就直接去做就对了。那这种就是所谓的unilateral contract。That's a letter B, bilateral, circle bilateral. In the first line of letter B, there are two promises. One promise is exchanged for another promise. So to the right of bilateral contract, put down accept with a promise. Accept with a promise. I promise to pay you $50 next week if you promise to mow my lawn. We have a contract. You're going to mow my lawn and I'm going to pay you for that service. Bilateral, two promises are exchanged. 另外一种呢，就是呃所谓的双边的契约。为什么说是双边呢？因为双方都有对对方做出这个约定，promise。所以有两方的promise。我们这边看到two promises。所以我们举一个例子，例如呃我说如果你下个礼拜帮我割这个